All right, hello everyone. My name is Jacob Istry. I'm an undergraduate researcher with the Shui Lab Group at Mississippi State in chemistry. Today I'm going to be telling you about the process of creating, uh, testing, and approving pharmaceutical drugs. So let's get right down to it. There are four main stages of development for pharmaceutical drugs. The first is to select a protein that is related to a disease and figure out the structure. This allows us to develop a molecule whose shape and properties can interact with the protein in a beneficial way. The second step is commonly called preclinical trials. During this stage, significant lab work is done to explore important variations, properties, and possible effects of the drug candidate. In clinical trials, the drug candidate is tested on human volunteers in multiple phases, and finally the drug is commercialized for sale and prescription. Shown here are three commonly used drugs, both with their chemical names and their common names, atorvastatin or Lipitor for cholesterol, omeprazole or Prilosec for heartburn, and amoxicillin for antibiotic. Identifying a problem is the first step in drug creation, and it focuses on finding a question that can be answered through chemical means. Usually, once a disease-related protein has been found, efforts focus on inhibition of the protein. The figure to the right is an example of competitive inhibition, in which a chemical that has a similar shape but does not react with the protein is used to block the reactive substrate. Other functions and methods of drugs are available, However, this is the most common. Preclinical trials refer to the lab work portion of the drug development process. In this stage, workers use experimental strategies to access potential inhibitors and analog libraries or similar structures through chemical synthesis. For inspiration, chemists often look to natural products that have useful abilities for the target protein. When testing the primary compound or the most useful one, it's always good to have more options, so a chemical library is built up of similar structures. This process is usually centered about small molecule drugs, which make over 90% of FDA-approved market drugs. This stage has many steps. Drug discovery can include new information about the disease, unexpected side effects of other treatments, or new technologies, mostly in the field of delivery methods. <clears throat> Strategies for de developing new drugs include retrosynthesis, which means to start from an idea of the final product and building it from readily available materials, and the chemical library that I talked about before. The picture on the right is a simple example of retrosynthesis. Other steps during this time include finding out how toxic the chemicals are and what they're harmful to, such as the skin or major organs, Characterization, which means determining characteristics like how stable the structures are, how well they can dissolve, and other things. This stage sometimes has animal testing depending on regulation and drug effects, but this is becoming less common. Our lab work mainly focuses on accessing new and useful chemical structures. This includes determining the active or functional group on the molecule. The picture shows several common functional groups. At this point, we also determine what the group does to the target protein and find the most effective conditions for the reaction to take place, the best temperature, the best solvent, the best catalyst, and so on. We also find new ways to build chemical bonds, identify new catalysts, which are molecules that speed up the reaction without being used up, create strategies for selective synthesis, which means that we pick how and where the molecules connect, and rapidly build libraries of compounds. The third major stage is the clinical testing stage. It's broken down into four phases. Phase one trials are performed on a group of 20 to 80 healthy volunteers. This step mostly focuses on safety, side effects, and how the molecule is broken down by the body in metabolism. If phase one testing reveals acceptably low toxicity levels, phase two testing can begin. The primary focus of this stage is finding out how effective the drug candidate is at fixing the problem. The tests for this step are performed on volunteers who suffer from the target condition, and there can be anywhere from 50 to 300 subjects. 
Testers also use control groups for this step, in which some subjects receive a placebo, or inactive pill. This is done because sometimes people think they have been given real medicine and begin to feel better even though the drug was not real. This is known as the placebo effect, and the control tests are used to eliminate that variable. Most drug candidates that fail, fail at this stage. After the completion of phase 2 testing, drug candidates that have proven to be effective are taken to phase 3. FDA representatives meet with the sponsors of the new drug candidate, which is usually a pharmaceutical company, and decide how to do these studies. Phase 3 trials are also done on volunteers, with the target condition and include placebo pills, but the sample size is much larger, up to 3,000 people. During this stage, data is gathered about the effects of different doses, different demographics like age and background, and combination with other drugs, or compatibility. Finally, the candidate reaches the NDA, or New Drug Application, step. This is a formal application to the FDA, which includes all the data from each trial and other important information. The FDA then inspects the data and makes a final decision about the drug. Occasionally, Phase 4 trials are required by the FDA as post-approval tests, but these are typically focused on a small part of the process rather than the entire process, like the other phases, and these also come after the FDA says that the drug can go forward. The full monetary cost of inventing, testing, and producing a new drug can be anywhere from millions to hundreds of millions of dollars over the course of 10 or more years. Many lab workers contribute hundreds or thousands of dollars and hours of work to complete the testing in preclinical and clinical stages but the end result is a new drug to benefit life.